Thus, just so did the fall occur. In one and the same instant did Samael the blind declare himself equal to God. Did Satan enter unto the serpent? And the serpent did tempt Eve. It was the tears of Eve in Eden that brought about the flood. So here we see the third level or dimension of the fall, following Eve's temptation of Adam, when God spoke unto Samael and said, You err. After God had spoken thus to Satan, God entered into Eden to cast out original sin. He entered into Eden through the tree of knowledge, whose seeds are the ten sephirot. Here is the tree of knowledge diagram which depicts the hypercube of time we call Kabbalah. It is written Adam and Eve, having recognized their nakedness, concealed themselves with fig leaves and thus disguised themselves as trees. So when God came down to Eden on earth, he came down in the form of the tree of knowledge. He then cursed the sinners involved in original sin. This is the sevenfold curse, known as the Mark of Cain, which is the taking back of seven blessings. The blessings are seen here to be the unfolded left and right columns on either side of the foreshortened central column of the Tree of Knowledge. The central column is the compression into one of the four Sephirot Malkuth, Yesod, Tifereth, and Kether. The Sephirot here are labeled according to the four prime trigrams of the I Ching. Yin, positive, is leftmost, signifying Bina, while Yang, negative, is rightmost, signifying Chakma. In the middle is Tao, signifying the middle way, or the Buddhist eightfold path. The manner God cursed the sinners was to remove, one by one, each of these seven blessings. First he retracted the gift of communication given to the serpent, and made its shape like the Tao, the path itself, to mimic its circumspection of speaking with a forked tongue. Next he cursed the offspring of the egg-laying serpent and the birthing and nursing Eve. He cursed Eve to feel pain in bearing her children by Adam, and he cursed Adam to eat only of the tree of knowledge and to sweat to harvest the grain of the herbs of the field and render it into bread to feed his family with Eve. Finally, we are cursed with the curse of death, the curse of dust to dust and of ashes to ashes. Here we see the sevenfold curse penetrating the three loops of an Ouroboros, a serpent eating its own tail. Here we see the uncoiled serpent eating its own tail, the zodiac of twelve aeons, interpenetrated as in the last model by the sevenfold mark of Cain. As before, the twelve aeons are believed by Gnostic Kabbalists to each be ruled over by one archon, and that between these archons exist the seven Kamea as powers. Here we see the four worlds of Hakabala after the fall. We see Yetzira now separating Bariah, paradise, from Messiah, and the seven acts of creation. Yetzira is the tree of knowledge, and we, the cursed children of Adam, must ascend this model to re-enter paradise. It is said now the path to paradise is guarded by an angel with a flaming sword. Thus the tree of life is now alike a flaming sword. Here we see the Sephirot striking like lightning down from the cloud of Bariah. We see Adam, fallen downward through Asaya, must reascend the tree of knowledge to reacquire the tree of life's forbidden fruit. This is the Kabbalistic process called recapitulation, 
or recommunion, the reuniting of King God with the crown of your own mind. At last we find the world or dimension of things now, following the fall. The tree of knowledge bearing the fruit of life is full grown, the seven cameo are fully aligned, the meaning of the fruit of life can now be known, the Gnostic aeons are turning, and the time of Kabbalah is approaching us all. First, we turn our attention to the Tree of Knowledge, recombined with the Tree of Life. Here, at last, we see the meaning of the Seven, as the chakras on the central pillar, and the meaning of the Ten, as the eight double trigrams of I Ching, as well as Yin and Yang. Twenty-two paths connect the ten, and twelve connect the seven. There are a total of seventy-two unique traits on this diagram. Ten plus twenty-two of the Tree of Knowledge equals thirty-two, and seven plus twelve of the Tree of Life, which combine to form his fifty names besides Marduk. Thus, these fifty combined with the twenty-two tarot trumps or Hebrew letters, total 72. This is the model of the seven Kamiya assembled. The seven Kamiya, considered equivalent to the sevenfold curse of Cain, the seven powers of the Archons, the seven Olympic planetary dignities, and the seven chakras, were originally seven talismans made of magic number squares. These squares, the cameo, can then be folded up around a Pythagorean theorem triangle to form this flower-like shape. Here we see the Tree of Life's fruit schematically exploded as we had seen before with the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge eaten by Eve. The larger green circle signifies the standard zodiac while the smaller blue torus signifies the three-looped version of the zodiac, seen from the side. The red triangles represent the sevenfold Olympic cameo as trajectories. This is a depiction of the usual form of a zodiac, containing the usual expression of the planets, not as bars across the circle, but as a star of seven points within a circle of twelve. This image shows us in a single simple model the entirety of all that has thus far been described. Its real meaning, however, is understood only by a few who are the true Gnostics. Lastly, we see this depiction of the alignment of the seven planets on May 5th, 2000 AD and the alignment of the Earth, Moon, Sun, and Galactic Core on December 21, 2012 AD. We can now, if we should so like to, and also should we choose to do so, see the similarities of this model to the four worlds of Kabbalah.